Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about code styles and getting dismissed from a project. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I got a remote job because I worked on a project from a year ago that perfectly fitted into the this company's uh, type of project or the product they were trying to build and I presented my in my solution in an interview to my coding challenge and after three days they rejected me because the manager said that I'm using classes instead of functional components. Is that enough to reject me even though they could refactor my code and start using it? So I'll just give you the short answer and that's gonna be yes this is enough for them to dismiss you. Whether or not it's fair depends on how this all went along or like how this all played out. So I'm just gonna give you a few scenarios that I'm thinking about right now and let's just walk through them, okay? So the first thing I wanna address here, guys, is that if you say something like, well, you can just refactor my code and it's still gonna work right, that is a really bad mindset for you to have. Get that out of your head immediately. It's not the way to go about this. You see, a com if you are a developer who doesn't understand that there are different coding styles, then you are a developer who is never going to stay employed for very long. You see, on average, the goal of every software project is to, and this is a famous saying, is to l make the code look like it's one developer who wrote the whole thing. Now, in theory, that's a very nice idea. In practice, it's very hard. It's almost impossible to do, but that is the ambition. It's the utopia and vision of how you write software in a multi-team project or a multi-person project. So if you are a developer who for some reason, and this doesn't have to just be a coding style thing, it can actually be um, like if you are writing software in a style or like your own way with a lot of bad logic or make it really, really hard to understand or stuff like that. I've ta talked about this many times before, the term legacy code. If you create legacy code, you are causing problems actually you're actually you it's like you're in the eyes of the company you're basically a faulty component in many in many ways you and and you're actually causing more work you're you may be solving the problem but they don't want you to just solve the problem and i want you to really understand this guys this is why i always kind of sh shake my head when i hear these uh, rookie programmers who just tell me every single time i try to explain something that Oh, but Frederick, you can just use, I don't know, some library or some framework, or you can just use that, you can just use that. And I go, yes, and I try to keep my calm, and I go, that's possible if you don't have any existing code, and if you don't have any context and no requirements, and you can do whatever you want and everything's just going to be fine, then yes, yes you can. But when you are working as a professional, that's not always an option. Many times there's existing code, there's an existing style that you need to follow because the alternative is that you go your own way and this exact thing might actually happen. You will start to notice that the people who are actually f comfortable with your style of work, with their style of working, uh, see that, well, you're not doing what everybody else is doing on this project. Uh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna discipline you, discipline you. And if you have, and this is the first scenario here, if you have, you, if you have committed code to a company code base without taking the time to check out the style of work they do, in other words, if you're trying to, for example, now I'm going to take an extreme example, let's say that it's an all Java project, strict object-oriented programming, and all of a sudden you're writing everything in a super super functional way. That is enough for a for a for other developers to have a problem with you, to, and it might actually warrant a bit of discipline. I'm not saying that you will get fired for the thing if you're like doing it for the first time and you didn't know any better. That's a mistake that you could have made but you are expected to be uh, to understand that you need to under uh, that the goal here is to create code that is in line 
with the practices used at the company. You don't just go off and on your own and do whatever the hell you want. That's very unprofessional. If you want to go about it the right way, you need to have a dialogue to figure out, okay, what is the style? Because as I said, the goal is to create code that is comprehensible to everybody. So, unless you have the buy-in, don't try to create a completely new style of working because it's not it's not acceptable to say, well, we you can just uh, you can just refactor it because nobody wants to do that for you. And if you have to do it yourself, you basically have to take more time to do something you could have done in theory cor uh, correct on the first try. Now that last statement, in theory, you could have done it correctly the first time hangs on this 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 scenario that you actually had access to what like existing code that you could have taken inspiration from but if you, what I suspect may have happened here which is very unfair I'm very sorry to say well it could be if you have presented code as part of an interview and the manager is a developer and they dismiss you they can dismiss you for two different types of reasons as well now one thing would have been let's say for the sake of argument that you're dealing with code committed in a specific language or a specific type of uh, of framework. Now, usually every language and every framework has these community decided best practices. An example would be if you go to a Java project, do you know that f it will show very quickly if you understand how the norms work. For example, you have packages or directories that fo hold a very specific structure. That is very co it's like standard practice. Everything. I mean, even the template projects use that exact structure when you're writing Java code. The same sort of things are true in, say, Rails. React is another example, or Angular. Like there are these styles of working that are community best practices. If you don't follow those and it's very clear that you're using anti-patterns or you're like completely reinventing your own style of doing something, that's going to be a red flag. It's going to indicate that you may not be so involved. Or I mean, sure, you could be smarter than everybody else, but usually the first thing people are going to think is if the code isn't very clearly better than what's already being used in the good practices that we, of the community, well, they're going to assume that you don't really know what you're doing. And that's something that can absolutely happen. And you may have lost the job for that exact reason. You didn't follow the community best practices or didn't follow the styles of working. And it showed in the code test or the interviewing process. And your manager is a technical person. If you have a non-technical manager, they're never going to like they're not going to figure this out. It's you. This usually only happens if you're dealing with the hiring manager who is also a developer. The last scenario is, and this is the unfair, really unfair one. The last one is, especially when this is functional, you may be dealing with a really immature and very stupid manager who has this notion that the only style of working that is worth anything to the to uh, to IT is his or her preferred way of doing it. If you have a very opinionated manager who thinks that functional program is the only thing that matters doesn't really matter what anybody else is thinking and they're really immature about this and they will actually behave this way they might actually I mean I have been disciplined in some cases by a person who is a strict functional fanatic and had to adjust my code in order to make that person happy because it just so happens that that person at the time was my manager and you are in the same sort of boat as uh, as I am here. If you're dealing with someone who is very, very opinionated about these sorts of things, you have to ask yourself, do you want to, like, if you're working for them, do, can you adjust your code so that it makes them happy? Do you want to do that? And in some cases like this, when you're actually looking for a job, you, I'm very sorry to say, might actually lose the job just because, I don't know, you just try to do your best and for some reason someone has a different a very strong and different opinion about what good practices are even though it's them who is in the wrong that doesn't really matter because they are the one who is pro giving uh, who is providing the opportunity right so what i want you to take away from this is that you can absolutely get disciplined you can get into trouble 
and in this scenario you might actually lose your job opportunity if you don't understand this fundamental truth and that is that it doesn't matter if you think that you know the best way of writing software if it doesn't fit into the code base if you're a functional diehard nerd and you're going to go into a strict object-oriented programming paradigm you can't force that code base into the way of you of the way you want to work it's not going to most likely play out all that well for you. Same thing goes the other way. If you're going to go to a functional code base and so forth. And the same thing goes for frameworks and so forth. There's tons of these little best practices and norms for how we do work. And it all comes down to that we want to create a code base that is uh, that looks like it's one person who wrote the whole thing and in ideally good uh, in good standing, right? And sometimes you're going to have to adjust. If you want to stay in the industry, you're going to have to figure out how to write code that solves the problem that you need to solve in the way of the current code base. If you don't do this, you're, as I said, you might actually get disciplined or you might get fired or even, uh, things like that. If you learn how to do this, you can basically work wherever you want. Have a great day.